Or do you Listen, not despair for the future in any way? Sweetie, I would rather be grabbed by the pussy than have a pussy for president. The rise of the right is a fantastic thing. I'm tired time of being in history. told what to say and what to think. People are t tired of tiptoeing around. But you I didn't get that time. memo anyway, Everybody Katie, because you never shut up. <laughs> Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to watch Katie Hopkins just being extremely based and also predicting the future. This is a video from 2016 when Donald Trump had just been elected, an event that she was actually a massive cheerleader for. Now, let's get into the first part where Katie Hopkins shows this host what it looks like to have big brass balls. Can I ask you, is there any part of you as a mother of two daughters uh, that... that, and, that and a son. And it's, no, but it's, I'm, I'm kind of thinking just for a moment about this, uh, that, that this is the man who talked about grabbing women by the pussy. Is there any point, a part of you that feels, this is not my guy, I don't want this guy <laughs> to be talking like this about any woman at all. Do you Listen, not despair for the future in any ways? Sweetie, I would rather be grabbed by the pussy than have a pussy for president. <laughs> Woo! And, and go you, go you, go you. And you're happy with that language? I'm very happy with that language. Look, none of us are that polite behind closed doors. My girlfriends have ruder language. Real men have ruder language. The gentleman clapping is a real man, obviously. Real men. He would have ruder language Katie, than pussy. I'm not offended by the Katie, expression. Katie, uh, he, he's no longer in the locker room, he's in the Oval Office. Sure, and that was a private conversation eight years ago before he was running. Whilst Clinton was in the Oval Office, of course, uh, Monica Lewinsky was on her knees with Hillary stood right by her. So I don't know if you're going to say that's any better, sweetie, because well, I don't think it is. She's not president. I'm talking about the current president elected. Yes, but when Bill America. Clinton was president. I'm not talking about the past, I'm talking about the future. And, and eight years ago, before Donald Trump even ran, he used the word pussy. I'm not offended. You are, you deal with are your any issues. Of, are any of you, I have no issues. I'm just curious, is there any part of you uh, remotely concerned about the nature of... No, you know, what we needed in America was someone that was going to have a strong lead, who was going to stand up for white people as well as black people in America, who was going to stand up for bringing jobs back, for allowing Americans to have their weapons, and for allowing the Supreme Court to be a conservative Supreme Court. No one here can really understand that, which is why the pollsters were wrong, why you guys were wrong, why state broadcasters were wrong, and every other commentator yeah. and every other pundit was wrong. Last question. I think, you didn't get I think it right. it's important Blair. to say, though, first, that real men don't say sexually assault women. Real men don't grab women and real men don't behave like that. But Katie coming out with the amazing one-liners and that one is absolutely iconic. I would rather be grabbed by the pussy than have a pussy for president. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several. O'Donnell. But she's absolutely right about what she's saying here. And I believe that her comments have actually aged extremely well. She's just saying that those comments made by Trump were eight years prior to this actual interview, way before he was president in a private conversation that was secretly recorded. You're a star. They let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. Hello. How are you? And then this painfully beta simp is acting like he's all indignant and shocked about it. And it's always these types of guys, these types of news anchors that get involved in the darkest and most weird sex scandals. And I get it that Donald Trump's words were not something to be emulated or enacted, but he was clearly, clearly joking and having a bit of banter. And if it were you, wherever you are in the world right now, having something secretly recorded that wasn't your finest moment, I'm sure it wouldn't look so great. And plus, if you're a fully grown man that has friends and hobbies, has played in a sports team, or has worked in a male dominated environment, then you won't be shocked by this. Men use dark and perverse humor. It's just the way that we operate. And if you can't separate a joke from reality, and if you can't perceive intent, then that is your problem. And women, as much as it troubles me to think about, we know that when you get together, you say some pretty heinous stuff yourself, except the difference is us men don't care about what happens in the nail salon. We don't care about what happens at brunch when you're all taking photos of your food. But for some reason, the feminists are obsessed with what happens in the locker room. And the last point I'll make on this is that you can really tell a woman who has been a mother to boys or has 
been a sister to brothers or something along those lines, just for whatever reason, understands men. Because with these topics, they understand that men need spaces where they can just interact with other men. A space where they can be a bit foolish and dark and let their hair down a little bit. And these based women tend to think the boys are hanging out, they think it's funny, they're not gonna get involved, let them do their thing. And this is absolutely essential for men, whether it be going for golf or having a game of poker, whatever it may be. From my experience, the ones who get it live much happier lives in tandem with the opposite sex. And now onto the next part where Katie talks about the rise of European right-wing politicians. But guys, here's before we get to the next bit. If you do wanna see this video go far and wide, and if you wouldn't mind chucking a like on it, that would be enormously helpful. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Back to the clips. Would you like to see Marine Le Pen as president of France? Yeah, for me, I think the rise of the right, it's going to be on my radio show on Sunday, 10 o'clock LBC. The rise of the right is a fantastic thing. And I think Angela Merkel, mother of all migrants, did us a great service, actually. When she opened up all the boards and said, come on in, she actually created this change. She made you're, Brexit you're happen. Le Pen she fan. made... Uh, Donald Trump's victory happened. Donald Trump will reinforce Brexit. Yeah. I think we'll see Marie Le Pen in do you power. Think it would be and worth, I think do Italy you think, will fall to the right as well. And I think that's a fantastic do you think that's good? thing. Do you think it'd be worth fantastic. your while when you get home to the UK this weekend to, to maybe dig out a book or two if you have them on your uh, shelf on the 1930s Germany? It's, a, it's the lowest form of argument to go back to I that. I don't know no, about I that think anymore. what you've seen History is people has an awful that habit of repeating When I hear the, the expression tired. rise of the right, I think people about well, that time in history. People are tired of being told what to say and what to think. People are t tired of tiptoeing around. And people are tired of the fact that the list of things you can't say is now longer than the list of things you can. And but you I don't get that memo anyway, Katie, because you never say. show up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Just, just one final Last point. Last word each. People, pe people think that fashion, fascism is people in jackboots doing a funny walk or people being... People think that fashion, fascism will arrive and it will be people brought to death camp. Fascism doesn't arrive like that. Fascism arrives like this. It pretends to be your friend. It tells you what's going to get point. you a job. And it others people. It makes people into enemies. Katie Hopkins. I'm a really proud Brexiteer. I'm delighted England and the rest of the UK are leaving the EU. And from this proud Brexiteer, I'd like to say to Americans that voted to Donald Trump, thank you very much indeed. Go, 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 make America great again. So Katie making the well thought out points about the necessity of the right wing candidates that have been poking their heads up over the last decade or so in the face of the destruction of Europe, whilst the other two are just making low grade, low IQ sort of points. Read a book about 1930s Germany comparing patriots to Nazis. Wow. Just a riveting, thought-provoking and original statement there to stop Katie in her tracks and just make her rethink everything. And then the other lady, who I don't even know why she's on the panel, if I'm honest, says, oh, Katie, you never shut up, and then says something about fascism and then her face moved for a little while longer after that. <laughs> the difference here, guys, is that Katie's not virtue signaling and she's not trying to get applause from the studio audience. She's trying to say the truth even though it hurts. She was looking very closely at the state of Europe and America. She was getting on the ground, speaking to people, and keeping a very close eye on the cultural landscape. That's why she was able to predict things with a lot of accuracy, like Brexit, like Trump, and like she just said, Italy would fall to the right. The other two in this video are just out of touch with reality. They're not exactly encumbered by deep thought on this matter, and that's why they're able to be so flippant about it. And in a way, it's kind of beautiful to see because it's really bitten them in the ass the last few years. Just look how much the pen has swung and we've got Javier Millet recently being elected and Gert Wilders being elected and Georgia Maloney in Italy. But these highfalutin ivory tower sort of liberals, they look at regular people who want strong borders, have pride in their national identity and culture and love God and they are disgusted by them. Hence why they compare them to Nazis. So you just love to see that cultural pendulum swinging back towards the way of tradition, common sense. So that guys I do hope you'll come and find me down below you can hit those links and also if you would like to subscribe you can hit this button right here and if you'd like to watch another video click right here till next time i'm jake this is rattlesnake tv keeping you armed and dangerous